All right, see you later, Pen. Okay. Drive carefully. No mucking about with your phone. Go on then. Well, there goes Pen. She's just off to town to get some stuff. We've got look. We've got a chap in. Look, he's doing this, the guttering. See that stuff like stainless steel gutter in, and he's he's started a fire over there. I think he's doing like some soldering or something, welding or something. There's Bung Bung. He's staying here with me. So it's still raining a lot, um, though not so much the last few days. A bit less. But yeah, I'm glad we're putting the gutters up. It does, I think it's a good idea. So around this side, you can see the gutter is half installed. That's what it looks like. It is quite big, uh, quite large size. So. Bananas. They're too small and tiny. Anyway, so yeah, while Pen's out, well, we've got these avocados here. So Pen ordered these off the internet. We've got these three avocado trees, I guess they are, aren't they? Right, I think I've got everything I need in there. So we're gonna use our existing watering system. I can always just take a spur off and you know, dig a little trench and bury it. But what I'm going to try and do is just change the sprinkler heads from the directional ones to the ones that spin around and see how well. Hopefully it can reach to where I'm going to put these new trees. Well, I'm just changing my mind at the last minute here. See, we've got these Betel palms up there. Well, sometimes the fronds fall down when they get old. So you get this stuff falling down. All that stuff there. Don't want to plant little baby trees under that, do I? So I'm trying to find somewhere better over here. See, we put this new durian in recently. Well, yeah, this one's already been clobbered by, I think, off that one up there, even though it's not directly above it. But, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to put them along here. I think it's a little bit a little bit further away from the things above them. Bunk, what are you doing? You're a naughty dog. That barking. So this is what the gutters look like. They're stainless steel and... Um, I don't know, welded together, brazed together. I'm not sure what the word is. So that's about eight inches across. Yeah, I have decided to do all four sides and then I'm gonna have four down pipes, like one at each corner, just get the water out into the farm basically. And then once it hits here, sort of deal with it here, maybe dig channels or something. And yeah, they are putting like a slight slope on the gutter. It's like, like a, where the ladder is there in the middle, it's like a high point and then it slopes down towards each corner. Let's get these sprinklers turned on and we can see where we're going to plant those avocados. So yeah, most of the sprinklers I've got on at the moment are directional ones. But for these avocados, I can put on some spinny ones so it chucks water the other side as well. So, well that looks just fine actually. Okay, so I've got those three all in their positions now. The sprinkler water is reaching them, no problem. So I get the height about right, slightly higher rather than slightly lower. And the only thing you want to do is check that it's not become root bound inside this. Take this off carefully and just see if the roots are like circling each other and if they are, cut them off. So it doesn't look too bad. You can see the root down the bottom there's already been cut. It looks like it's cut quite recently. So. You have to be a bit careful of this because sometimes these things can fall apart quite easily but you can see some of the roots are growing in circles there i don't 
really want that, but this one's not too bad to be honest. You, you see a lot worse than this. Um, maybe I'll just try and straighten them out a little bit. I mean, just what you don't want is you, you don't want to put it in the ground with the roots circling each other because over time they can grow in a circle and choke like the nutrients off. They, like they, the trees can choke themselves. So yeah, that's one thing you do want to check for. You don't want the roots growing around each other. If you're ever even planting one tree or a lot of trees, I would suggest do this job yourself because the people, if you pay someone else to do it, you'll, you can't trust that they did it properly and, and check them properly. And well, when we get a tree die, I'm never a hundred percent of the reason, but I'm sure a lot of the time it's because the roots are growing in a circle. I've dug some of them up and I've, I've seen it with my own eyes. And I think that's because we've paid other people in the past to plant trees and we just don't think they did it properly. So pick up the plastic rubbish. I mean, that's another thing. If you pay other people to do this, they're going to leave plastic all over your farm as well. They just, they just chuck litter everywhere. So do it yourself as best. So this one's a little bit worse. You can see it's got quite a few roots sort of growing around. So I really don't want that. I'm going to try and carefully get them out. But, you know, if I've got to tear them, I'll tear them. But I just I don't want them all growing up around the side like this just want to do your best to sort of like, like get them out and then just cut them off try not to tear them but if you if you have to you have to try not to have this thing fall to pieces on you but it often will that's why I, I lie it down on its side try and keep it in one piece as best as I can um, just just trim off some of these there uh, they'll grow back so so those two guys are getting the gutter up on there now that's good also over here today the grass cutters are in as well that's why the grass is nice and short here now i'm filming this on their lunch break so it's nice and quiet at the moment hopefully they'll give me another 10 minutes before they start up their machines so those three are in with a bit of luck they don't get clobbered by something from above in about three or four years time we should have some avocados well hopefully it won't rain today if it rains really heavy it's going to wash away all that new soft mud around the tree so the last thing i'm going to do is put a couple of these fronds like around there to protect that mud it's just for a few days So these papayas are ready now as well, starting to turn yellow. These come out all year round so we can eat these all the time. This is papaya number three from our papaya. It's been in the fridge all morning so well, let's, let's have at it. It's quite hard to make the video today because it's too hot, the camera, my phone keeps cutting out. So find yourself a suitable container that's got holes in the bottom. Uh, Pen was also thinking about using this so yeah you can use whatever. And then just a bit of soil and, well, chuck the seeds in, I suppose. Yeah. So they top, they go in the corner, yeah? Why are you putting them in the corner? So when we have more, we can put everything. Oh, right, right. But right, not right. all the seeds come alive, you know? Yeah, so with the papaya, you just want to chuck in as many seeds as you can, really. Yeah, is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, simple as that, then. So we'll wait and see if any of them sprout and if they do, they'll be moved to somewhere like their final position. As we're eating those, we'll add all those seeds into that tray as well and hopefully some of them will sprout. Okay, one log. And again, you can see we've got one of these spinny sprinklers set up here so it will water everything around here. So is that it? Is that stable? No, it's not too bad. Okay, thank you for the demonstration. They're doing that section over there where I was putting the avocados before. So they come once a month and then after they're done, we'll go around and we'll put the vitamins on the trees. So we do ask other people sometimes, you know, what vitamins are you using? And then, well, if we can find it, we'll try it out. Someone recommended this to us. Um, as I was saying, we, we don't favour anything in particular, we're just going to buy whatever. I think actually we've probably had the best results with cow manure, so that's why I'm keen to get hold of that again. Let's 
So I better do something about that, I guess. Well, it's only spitting a little bit at the moment, but yeah, just in case it starts to piss it down, you never know. Could start chucking it down and go on all night, so better safe than sorry. I'll go around and do all four corners. So, oh, it's not quite reaching. So yeah, I'm gonna try and get the water out into the floor and then dig channels away maybe. Some parts we're lucky, like there's a, there's a bit of a natural slope down there. Over here is a little bit more tricky because there's like a natural dip like over there. So I, I don't want to flood there. So I might have to dig a channel out in that direction. It's a bit tricky because we've got pipes underground and could be annoying. Yeah, I think for us here on the farm, the water is the most annoying thing. Like water problems, too little, too much, that sort of thing. Um, anyway, where were we? So you'll have to forgive the noise, grass cutters and whatever. I can't help that today, but, um, but yeah, basically you want to get yourself a measuring device. Don't try and do it by hand. You get a proper measuring thing, you, you, you understand what dose you're giving every time. Although to be honest, I don't really go by this. I just kind of look at the floor and, and see roughly how much I'm putting. And I'll sprinkle it around the, the drip line of the tree. So for this tree, that's about here. Yeah, so round about in this area, all the way around the tree, just giving it a nice sprinkling. So I get a nice circle all the way around. Obviously the bigger the tree, the bigger the circle. Well, the idea is that you put the vitamins, you know, a bit further out to encourage the tree to grow its roots outwards in search of the nutrients. Stop cutting the grass for a minute, it's nice and quiet again. So look, I just want to talk about something while I'm here, I was just thinking about it. So, we've got some trees planted very close to the house here. You know, they're only a couple of meters from my foundations here. But what people have said is that durian don't have very strong roots and, and that's why we've left them in. Some of the other fruit trees are like the, the rambutan that was back there. I, I took that out because I, I don't want to cause any problems with what I'm building. But obviously we're going to be keeping a close eye on this. Any, any cracks I get appearing, I might start suspecting the trees and I will take them out. So these ones that are right next to the house, we are going to keep these trees smaller. We're going to keep pruning them down, keep them a bit more shorter, a bit more bushy. We're definitely not going to have big giant trees here. Um, and in fact, all the ones inside the fence, we're going to keep them all a little bit smaller. So yeah, we've got the dogs in here all the time and you know, we don't want anything falling on the dogs. So the trees that are in here are going to be kept just a little bit shorter. Perhaps, you know, when, when they do have fruit, we'll We'll let them fruit on the lower branches. We won't have durian 10 meters above our heads like in our garden. The ones outside the fence, we'll, we'll let them get a little bit bigger. Yeah, good that the guttering's getting done. There's quite a few different sort of slopes around the house. It's not that straightforward. And when it floods, well, all of this floods here, the gate floods. There's a, a couple of spots around the house that flood. Say for example, that back corner, I might have to get it sort of dig a channel out to about here. And then there's a slight slope coming down, down there along the fence. So I might have to like dig another channel down to here. Then I'm gonna have a bit of a flood around here. So I might even dig a channel all the way down to the canal. Pen, I just fed the fish. I gave him quite a lot as well. Bung Bung's been in the pond. Now he'll be all smelly. Bung Bung! Come on. You're getting a shower now, you stink. 
So as you can see, this corner of the house, I've already got a channel there which goes down to the pond. So for the guttering here, yeah, I could just send it down there and well, into this, so don't have to do anything on this corner. And bang, come on! Hey! In now! Like we don't really train the dogs, so it's no surprise that they don't listen. Like in the well, my feeling is in the West people are a bit sort of crazy about training their dogs. In Thailand it's kind of like just leave them alone, sort of. The dogs do kind of teach themselves, you know, they're not tightly stupid. So, but yeah, they do do what they want a little bit though. Come on. Hey, come on. Maybe if I run after him, he'll think it's a game and try and play. But I don't want to pick him up because he's covered in pond water. Maybe that's part of his plan. Maybe he is clever. Hey. Bang, bang. Get in right now. Good. So this is your consequences, Bung Bung. Go in the pond, you get sprayed with the big hose. Bung Bung is really terrible. Like, wherever you want to take him on the lead, he'll always fight and always, always do the opposite. It's really strange. Wrap the lead around his legs and he'll drag his legs behind all the time. It's terrible. I don't know whether it's sometimes we think sometimes we think it's because he wants to be picked up, isn't it? So yeah, sometimes we think it's because he he wants that, but it looks like he's having a good time now. Come on, let's go! Come on! Yeah, Gorgie's comparatively really easy, and well, he's had no lead training or anything, but he just sort of follows him and Bung Bung are like total opposites like that. Bung Bung wants to be in control and hates to be taken anywhere on the lead. And Gorgi is like he wants to follow, he doesn't want to be the leader. Do get all that pond water off you, Bung Bung, you smelly. Yeah, it started raining a bit heavier now. Hopefully my makeshift gutters are holding up okay so that's the market there in front of us pen's gonna pop in there now and find us some dinner all right there goes pen with a green umbrella so i'm just gonna wait here with the dogs they're both sleeping all right pen's back all right fish you didn't get too wet all right what you got lots of nice stuff oh good Okay, so what did you find in the market? So I've got a Massaman curry. What else have we got? I've got a small with egg and I have pig curry. Oh, what's that? That pong, that's what we call a dog. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this Massaman. I haven't had one for a few months. stuff that dinner in quickly. We forgot the dog's dinner back at the farm so I'm going to go and pick it up. And also it is raining quite a lot so I want to go back and just check those temporary gutters I left there so just want to make sure nothing's getting flooded around the house. Lucky I'm not on a motorbike on a day like today. Let's see what's happening. Well, as is typical, when I get back here, it's starting to ease off a little bit, but yeah, that's a good thing anyway. Ah, well, lucky I did come back because the sheet's blown off in the wind. Let's just sort that out, just in case it pisses it down tonight or something. Well, I've got all those fixed up, more or less. That was really annoying, trying to get it all to balance, but at the same time, weigh it down so it doesn't blow away in the wind. Hopefully it'll stop raining anyway. So hopefully, it's all in vain anyway. This is all really annoying, really stressful. You know, walking around the farm like 
doing the trees, putting the vitamins out is, is really nice. It's, it's relaxing and enjoyable. The bad side of it is the rain. The rain is really annoying and well, building a house is it's not fun at all. I don't like it. Um, anyway, hopefully that's all right until tomorrow. Dog's dinner. Come on then, Gorgie, let's go back to the hotel. Well, I'm back over at the hotel now. Bung Bung is fed and asleep down there. That's where he sleeps. Pen is fed and on the iPad, that's what she does. Gorgie is chewing his bone. He'll chew that all night sometimes. Sometimes till like one in the morning and we've got to take it off him. I bought a packet of cigarettes recently. So I've been having one a day like after dinner. Normally I don't smoke, but um, I don't know. I think like one a day is okay sort of thing. It's the house, it's too stressful, so it's just like freaking me out. So I just need like five minutes to, to chill out. It's been about eight years since I've been drinking and smoking really. So it is pretty rare for me to do this. Anyway, that'll probably be it for the video. So uh, see you later.